Hi, my name is Carla Campos, and I'm here with John Saunders, one of the speakers at Social Tech Live, and Joseph Aquilino, one of my very good friends, and we usually co-host um, these kind of sessions together. And he's here for support and to talk to us about how social tech affects our businesses. Now, John's going to be speaking at Social Tech Live about how he has used the power of video to create amazing courses that sell. So I'm going to pass it on to Joseph so he can tell you more about himself. And I'm the founder of Social Tech Live Conferences because I feel that technology really is a big deal when it comes to growing people and their businesses. And these conferences really help get education out there, get people together to know each other and do business together. So that's pretty much my mission behind the conferences. And um, on to you, Joseph. Hi, everybody. Joe Aquilino in the house. Joey Giggles. You know me uh, from WIR Internet Radio. That's right, speaker.com slash Joey Giggles. Really excited to be here. I'm happy that caller invited me to come on in uh, and uh, co-host with her. And really excited, really excited to, to get to meet uh, a great man, John. Uh, and we're going to actually talk to him today a little bit about uh, this this conference that's coming up in the summer. So I can't wait. This is going to be an awesome conversation with John. Uh, looking forward to it, Carla. Looking forward to it. Hi. Hi, John. How are you? Oh, How hey. <laughs> that was my cue. Sorry. I totally missed that. Um, it was my face. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm just uh, I'm happy to be here with uh, Carla and Joey. Uh, Carla really just reached out to me and said that you know she'd love for me to be one of the speakers at the event, and I was you know happy to oblige. I'm a I'm a big proponent of just providing quality content to entrepreneurs, business owners, uh, totally free, so that they can use that, absorb it, and use it to uh, help their businesses excel. So um, I I'm the founder of Five Four Digital. We're a small boutique shop. We uh, we have four uh, teammates on our team currently. We all work remotely in South Florida, so that's why I'm able to work at the home office, of course. And um, I'm a big proponent as well for video content. So video marketing, Facebook has really been a big, big part of that because it's so inexpensive to market on there. And um, online courses have really excelled as well because of the ease of access for individuals to get on these courses, take, take the course, ask questions, um, and they're really, really affordable as opposed to, you know, of course, a traditional college education. And, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the gist of my, my intro. If you guys have any, any questions or anything you want me to talk about specifically, I'll be happy to, uh, to break into it. Awesome. So how did you start creating courses? Because that's the session you're going to be talking about. At yeah. Social Tech Live. yeah. No, definitely. So um, for me, it was about – so – my first course and my only course right now that I've, we're actually working on a new one right now for uh, for social media development. But the course that we made first was for web design and just an overall compass of you know a business owner or someone who has a tangible idea and they need to create a website, they need to do their SEO, they need to set up their social media platforms. So the first idea was you know a lot of times when we were um, prospecting for clients. You know, we give, we we'd sit down with them. We kind of analyze their problems and their issues, and then we say, okay, well, we have a proposed plan, a proposal ready to go. Here's the the proposal, and here's the pricing. And then, you know, in some cases, it would they would be like, oh, well, you know, that's too high. I can't really afford that. And I understand, you know, if you're a business owner starting out, you can't afford to drop, you know, five, ten, fifteen grand on web development because you're just starting out. You need that money to allocate towards other resources. So I was like, you know what? Well, what I can do is take a side project and then create this online course where I'll teach you how to do you know, simple web development where you can at least showcase your services you know, and about us, a few calls to action, whereas you can create all of this yourself as well as do the SEO, set up the social media. You, know, you just have to allocate the time. So if you don't have a lot of money, you, know, you might have a little bit more time. And using that, I was like, okay, let's launch this course and make it really affordable for people to take the course and ask questions on, you know, in like a college type of format. And Udemy was the platform that we use just because they take care of a lot of the, the, um, the user interface and experience on that site. So Udemy was, of course, the platform that I chose. Mm -hmm. 
That's that's really good. Uh, it's really awesome uh, that you chose that platform. Uh, I, I want to know a little bit more about your services. Uh, if you could please tell us a little bit more about the services that you do offer people. Yeah, sure, sure, absolutely. So 5.4 Digital, we're primarily digital marketing consultants. So a company could be like, you know, how can we leverage our site better? How can we, you know, make money online? For example, uh, we just finished a project with Community Health of South Florida. They're a hospital syndicate that has 11 locations. So, you know, we, we proposed a plan of attack where we basically did their website design, did all of their on-site SEO, um, content marketing, and then the last piece of what we do is just the marketing strategy, and that can include Facebook ads, that can include AdWords, which is PPC or pay-per-click. So it's, it's really just the whole digital marketing gamut, but more so from a strategic side where every client will have different services and different things that we focus on. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. So <clears throat> as a digital marketing agency, how, owner and person who operates one, how, what are your thoughts on kind of working with other marketing agencies and these conferences and coming together in these kind of events to grow your business? What are your thoughts on oh, that? Oh, I, I mean, I think it's awesome. We, me and Joey were just having, I'm sorry, Joey and I were just having a conversation where he was like, you know, in corporate America, it's kind of like doggy dog. Everybody's after each other's job. And, and in the, the entrepreneurial space, everybody kind of you know, leverages each other. You know, David Verano, who's a good friend, he helps me with a lot of the social media projects and strategies that I worked on. So, for example, we worked with the uh, the mayor of Hialeah. I was like, okay, well, you know, I know David's well versed in that area. You know, he's worked in Hialeah on a few projects. I'm going to bring him in and help me with this project. And we created a whole strategy based on that. So, I think, you know, as an entrepreneur, especially as you know a smaller agency, I think it's great to be able to leverage other people in the space that might excel at certain things more than I can, you know, so I might help hire a local uh, app developer to work on an app that we're working on. And I think it's great to be able to use people that are entrepreneurs themselves and help them build their clientele also. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, I want to get more into the live streaming. I, we were talking about this earlier. Um, the whole idea of active live streaming, you know, seeing each other face to face, you know, chatting with one another face-to-face, -face, getting to know people, you know, getting to bond with one another, you know, getting to network over live streaming. What do you think about live streaming, and how is live streaming going to help your business? Oh, I think it's awesome, and that's a, that's a great question. I think it's great because it's more raw and authentic when you're talking to someone face-to-face. -face. You know, I think hearing a person's voice, seeing them, seeing them in a natural environment, it's just more inviting. I feel like I know you now as opposed to, you know, if I send you a message on Twitter and we were exchanging via Facebook, it's kind of cooler to see the person and see their, inner, uh, their reaction to things that you're saying. Um, to help the business, I think it could be great because, you know, this could be another per – so for our next course, we're going to host it ourselves. You know, with Udemy, it's a great platform. I love it. But I feel as though, you know, we can have more power and more uh, efficiency if we host it ourselves. And with that being said – what we could have is, you know, live chat where we get on a chat for an hour or a couple hours every week and anyone can ask questions about the course or specific things that they want to know. So I think it just adds another level of interaction with, um, you know, your peers. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And the good thing about live streaming also that a lot of the platforms offer that they save it into video and that's one of the topics of the session you're going to be having at Social Tech Live, how you exactly. use video to bring in people to these courses. So I don't want to like ask like dig, dig in too deep about your next course, but um, do you plan to use live streaming maybe in your new course that you're going to be creating? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I I have the structure and everything laid out, and now that you guys, now that we've had this conversation, I'm starting to rethink a little bit about you know some of the components. Maybe even have an aspect where we do you know one one and a half hours a week where we sit down and we talk about a specific topic of the course that people are having problems with, right? So if I get a lot of questions regarding, oh, well, you know, I had issues with this, I didn't understand this, maybe make that the core focus of a weekly live feed where we could do it on Blab or Google Hangouts and people can just check in. And then what, what we could do is save that like we're doing live, maybe transcribe it into text and then use that as a blog post, you know, in the upcoming in the upcoming months. So, no, that's great. I, lo I love 
that we're having this live conversation. You guys are giving me more ideas. <laughs> well, that's that's great. You know, that's honestly great because uh, that's what we do as entrepreneurs. We actually brainstorm and, and we help each other brainstorm uh, new ideas. You yeah. know, and uh, where do you see yourself in five years, my friend? Where do you oh, see wow. yourself in that's, five years? That's a good question. So for me. <laughs> So I have two two mentors. I mean, I don't know if I can call them mentors because I never really talked to them, but you know, I watch a lot of their videos, read a lot of their content. So number one is is Gary Vaynerchuk. I don't know if you guys have heard of him, oh, but yeah. <laughs> super dope social media just genius. He's built like two successful companies. He's really um, just he's kind of rambunctious. He's honest. You know, he curses, but he's he's authentic. You know, and that's the main thing that I like. So I'm not saying I want to be Gary V, but I like to do more speaking engagements, more. Um, or traveling and meeting companies and helping them on a consulting basis that way. And then the second person uh, that I really admire is Neil Patel. He's another uh, marketer in our industry. You know, he's worked with Google, he's worked with the White House, and he provides a lot of just great content for free. And I, I just want to get to a point where I can uh, go into you know a bigger business or even you know bigger nonprofits and say, okay, this is the strategy I think you guys could use. And um, yeah, so ultimately be a, um, a marketing consultant, whereas I have the freedom to kind of travel and help these, these larger businesses. And, you know, um, in this space, there's a lot of competition in the speaking industry, and that maybe not enough events. So how do you think these events kind of help, and how does public speaking help you grow your business? I think sometimes people don't understand that yeah. aspect. No, that's true. So, so with me, you know, growing up as a kid, I was usually like an introvert. You know, I was into comic books, kind of a nerd. I, I had friends, but I wasn't really just extroverted and, and outgoing. So with me, you know, I took public speaking in college because I wanted to be more outgoing. I wanted to be able to speak to people and, and talk in, in public settings. And that, you know, that helped me to a certain point. And then I felt as though doing public speaking, it's kind of out of my comfort zone. And I always felt like if you're in your comfort zone, you can never kind of excel or get to where you want to be, right? You kind of have to be outside of your comfort zone. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to sign up. I'm going to do this. And one of the first things I did was with a good friend. She actually moved to New York. Her name's Alex Wall. Carla knows her. Um, she's like, hey, you know, do you mind speaking at this event? I did it. And, you know, I was, I was nervous as hell but when I started. And then as I got up there and started talking about what I know, you know, it just, it just becomes easier. It's just that, that jitters right before. So I feel like that helps me in the business because it helps me become, you know, not a better salesperson, but making it easier to talk to people, to speak to people, to uncover their concerns, to be able to help respond to questions. So I think public speaking is great for that. And with public speaking, you know, I'm not looking to make any money anytime soon. If I can and if I can build myself up to that point where I can, that's awesome. But I really feel like it just helps with exposure and just social media um, proof. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I want to ask more of a, like a personal question here, yeah. and you, you, you started out, uh, we were talking, you know, in, uh, in, a, in a corporate place, sort of a corporate place, and you understood, you know, that it was a corporate, uh, a corporate world, yeah. you know, and you wanted to branch out and start your own business and be your own boss. What made you make that step from that corporate place to where you are today, what made you want to go from a steady paycheck to a risk that you <laughs> didn't know that was going to work? No, you're, you're right. And, and, you know, for me, it was, it was a risk, and it was a calculated risk, I feel as though, also, because, you know, while I was at that agency working full-time, you know, I was helping friends with projects. So they were like, hey, you know, John, you mind building a website for me? I'm like, sure. And, you know, I did a lot of this stuff for free because I didn't really have um, a portfolio. So I was like, you know what, I'll go home, you know, I'll hang out with, with my lady for a little while, and then after that I'll go back to work. So around 10 p.m., you know, I'd go back to work, and I'd, you know, start building websites, doing social media campaigns for friends and family, and um, that's how I started to build clientele without even thinking about it. You know, when I left the agency, I already had six clients that were paying me on a recurring um, payment, and I was like, you know, this is enough money for me to survive the next few months, and then I can just start building out the business that way. So that's how that's how it happened for me. I was kind of doing stuff, not on the on the side behind the, the agency's back because we primarily dealt with automotive clients, but just helping friends and family build out their their marketing strategies. Thus, you know, helping me build my my portfolio. 
<clears throat> and it seems like that's kind of the way that most people go. They they sort of, you know, well, a lot of the newbies think that they quit their job and then they're going to have clients like right away. But, yeah. you know, it doesn't work like that. So what, what, what do you have to say to these newbies that want to start, like our agency or want to get away from corporate America and start yeah. their own thing? Um, yeah, so I, I mean, if, if you're looking to get into marketing, I say, you know, anytime you're not at the job, and listen, I know, I know if you're working at an ad agency, it's a lot of time. You know, I was there from like 8 to 7, 8 to 8, you know, I was there late sometimes. It's just agency life. But anytime you're not there, you know, if you have some time on the weekend, study online, look on, look on Google. I mean, Neil Patel's blog has tons of content. Um, there's a lot of bloggers. Just tons and tons of content that you can learn from. If you're like, you know, I want to learn SEO, you can find a 30-page doc or PDF on the basics of SEO, and you can teach yourself within a few weeks the basics and the logistics, and then put it to practice by, you know, building out a website or doing something like that. So, I feel like the internet has become really just a catalyst of growth and opportunity to learn absolutely free. You know, you can pay for a course, yeah, you know, 30, 40 bucks. That's that's 30, 40 bucks that you're putting. Towards you know self realization and building up your own your own um, empire, right? So I feel as though my best advice would be to absorb as much as you can. You know if you can find a mentor, someone local that you can talk to and ask questions. They can even you over the phone. And then the last thing is just um, apply what you're learning. You know just practice um, with friends and family. You know offer them either a discounted rate or do it for free. If you're starting out, you're gonna have to build your portfolio anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, I got I got a more, uh, again a personal question you know within you how do you feel your emotions I guess you know owning your own business you know how do you feel I mean how does it feel to own your own business how does it feel yeah. to be your own boss yeah it, it's it's awesome I mean the thing right now is everybody's you know entrepreneur everybody's doing their own thing everybody's you know it's kind of like the cool thing to be right now and, uh, and for me, I, I just feel as though I've always wanted the freedom to be able to work on the projects that I wanted, to be able to, you know, work when I wanted to. And, you know, you think when you become an entrepreneur, oh, you know, I'm going to work on the beach every day, I'll be hanging out. And, you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, it's not like that. You know, unless, unless you got a couple million in the bank, you can't really live to that extent. But, you know, one, one day a week, I can go to the beach and I can work from there. You know what I mean? I can go to the gym at 12 p.m. on a Tuesday. And it's just, I think... For me, it's more so the freedom to work how I want to, when I want to, within the framework of the business. And kind of following on that, the other day I was like literally on the floor of my bathroom crying because I didn't have, like things weren't going exactly as I had planned. But I'm, I'm a girl, so <laughs> I don't know if that's excusing <laughs> myself, but it's like an emotional roller coaster. Like, I think yes. people don't talk about it, but you know, it hits you hard when things are not like going and you have to keep kind of what? restructuring things and just kind of overcoming those hurdles and hurdles, you know, it's not like all the prettiness that we kind of portray on social media, or online, there's like a lot of like little hills that we go Oh through. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah, I agree. And, and no, that's a good point, Carla. I mean, a lot of people think it's all, you know, hey, I'm in my Benz, oh, I got my Audemars watch, I'm doing it. but there's a lot that comes with <laughs> the lifestyle. You know, you have to think about longevity, you have to think about, you know, your family, Friends supporting other people, it's, it's just, yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot. But, you know, I traded, I traded all um, for just this freedom to be able to, to work and, and do my thing on, on my own time. So, they, they, like they say, you know, you work 80 hours for yourself instead of working 40 hours for, for someone else. So, yeah, no, it's true, it's true. Awesome. Yeah, I got a thought-provoking question for you now, okay? But I uh, just wanted to say on that, I wanted to say on that point that it is it's a lot of risk. There is, you know, a lot of reward, though. There is a lot of risk in entrepreneurialism, yes. but there's a lot of reward as yes. well. So on that point that she brought up, definitely, it, it, you know, you have to keep restructuring. You have to, you know, keep moving forward and you know, keep rebranding if you need to rebrand, you know. But still, it is a lot of risk, but you get a lot of reward out of it. So I just wanted to, you know, throw that in to that point. But here's your thought-provoking question. Now, I'm with this like this. I'm saying to myself, wow, is today the tech revolution like in 1920 there was the industrial revolution? So what do you think? I mean, do you think we right now, because if you remember back in the industrial revolution, that's when they started building the businesses that we see today. You know, J.P. Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs, you know, all of those businesses that we see today. Do you see this? 
as a tech revolution, meaning a new industrial revolution. Oh, yeah. That, I mean, definitely 100%. It's just, it's crazy right now. I mean, I see, so I see, I watch this one guy on Instagram. He's uh, He's got a few million followers. A few years ago, this guy was in, uh, oh, sorry, it's kind of messy. This guy was in jail, and he was just trying to figure out what he was going to do when he got out. You know, he didn't want to go to school. He didn't want to do certain things. So we just started making little skits on Instagram, and now, you know, he makes more money on Instagram doing his comedic videos than he would on a full season of a TV show. So I think tech, the revolution is here right now. I mean, kids are out here making crazy money. There's 15, 16 years old, year old kids creating apps and developing apps and, and creating all this content, and they have the world to... Um, to expose them to this. You know, they can develop an app or learn how to do it absolutely free online through Code Academy or through other um, online ventures. So I think right now, if, if, you're, you know, if you're a young kid, if you're an older guy, if, you know, you're, if you're in your 60s, your 70s, you don't really have much to lose if you, if you start an e-commerce business or try to develop an app. You might be out you know, a couple hundred dollars or a thousand bucks, but you know, you'll, you'll have learned something and you can develop an, all these ideas and skills mostly for free. So I think it's definitely a tech revolution. I, I call it the tech renaissance right now. It's just, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and touching on that, when you talk about kids and how, you know, now they can actually work. And I know in the past people were abusing kids, but, you know, I have kids and they're always, hey, I want to start a business. Hey, I need money for this. I want to buy this. But, you know, I think work gives people, learn. you know, it shows kids the responsibility they need as adults. So I think for kids to work is important. Of course, not being taken advantage of, but, you know, it takes them off, like, the street. It keeps them out of trouble. I think, I mean, that's an amazing part of what you call the renaissance of tech, <laughs> the technology renaissance. So, you know. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I, I still think it's good to, to have experience working for a business or working for someone else just because you can learn a lot of things from that. You know, most of my life I worked for someone else and I was able to learn a lot of things that I should do, things that I shouldn't do, um, things that should change. So I think it's important to work for someone at some point in your life. But um, yeah, I, I think you I think you hit the nail on the head. Yeah, I, I worked uh, for eight companies in 11 years. So I, I have to say that I worked for a series of bosses, okay? So I did learn something from each, okay? Uh, I found out you know, after my injury, uh, that uh, corporate America for me, you know, when I found out that I was an entrepreneur because I always had these ideas that popped into my mind. I always had these creative ideas that popped in there. and I was developing, developing them in my mind and, and trying to implement them. And now, finally, they've come to fruition. I mean, so how do you feel about that creativity that you always get in your mind and, and putting it together to formulate all these wonderful things that you do? Yeah, yeah. Uh, man, it's, it's, um, it's definitely, it can be a challenge sometimes because I have, um, you know, I'll be up late one night in bed just thinking about ideas and going through things in my head. I'm like, oh, well, that's a good idea. Let me write that down. And then, you know, I'll implement it for a couple of days. I'll be like, eh, you know, I don't know if this is going to work. So I've tried to kind of focus my efforts around the business and ideas around the business. But I, I definitely uh, try to wean out the ones that I feel as though, okay, well, do I think this is going to be beneficial? Do, you know, how much time is this going to take? And, and that sort of thing. But, you know, in this day and age, with, with the Internet, you know, it's made it a lot easier to build out this stuff. Like, you know, if you wanted to start an e-commerce business, you can literally find a dropshipper get the products, you don't even have to have an inventory, you don't even have to have the ha products housed, and then just market those products, and then boom, you can have a successful business without having any overhead whatsoever. So it's, uh, I mean, maybe like 50 bucks if you're doing like a Shopify website for the hosting and stuff. So 50 bucks a month, and you can create an e-commerce business. So it's, it's definitely crazy right now. And um, I, I think I just went off on a tangent because that didn't answer your question, but. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, that's all right. <laughs> I don't know what creativity, creativity in action. Like the idea is just flowing, like right now, right here. <laughs> <laughs> Creative people have like lots of stuff going on in their mind at once. Sometimes I'm like here, then I'm here. I'm like, people, yeah. what are you talking about? Oh, Let me just calm my ADD for a second. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's been great talking to you guys. It, we've been on for a little bit of time now, and I we have to, I have to run anyway. I have to get my kids from school. Gotcha. So, Closing this off, we talked a lot about entrepreneurship, we talked about a lot of technology and social technology coming together, working together. 
And you can actually check out the conference at socialtechlive.com. And the hashtag also on social media is socialtechlive.com. So my name is Carla Campos. I'm signing off. Any last words from both of you guys over there? <laughs> Take care, guys. Catch me on speaker.com slash Joey Eagles every day. Come on down. Um, just check out the video blog. It's youtube.com forward slash 54 Digital. We post every single week uh, new marketing content for free for entrepreneurs. So this is John Saunders signing out. And I appreciate you guys having me on. It was awesome. Well, thank you for being on, guys. Joey runs an awesome radio show. John has amazing videos. I've seen them past my newsfeed. I've commented on his videos a couple of times telling him how great his work is. So check them out. Check you guys later. Social Tech Live. All right, guys. Have a Bye. good one.